Hey everybody, today we're going to be learning how to create layers. So essentially what this means is you can make it so you have the illusion of height by having bridges that you notice that you cross under uh, if you're not on the same level as the bridge and if you're above it, you pass over it. Now in the past I've done a video like this before, but I feel like I can explain things much more efficiently this time as I've learned some new tricks myself. Unlike the previous video that I've done a while back, this new method allows you to have more than just one extra layer. So without any further ado, let's just dive right on in. Now this picture here may seem a little bit intimidating, but don't worry because I'm going to be going over everything in sections. First we have this little layer 1 bridge. Now each tile of these bridges are actually events, and they're set up like this. Each one of these bridge events has two event pages. The first event page is set up so that the priority is set to above characters. This is so your player can pass under it. And the second page is set to below characters, so the player passes over it. But you also see that we have, in the conditions area, we have variable checked. And the variable selected is the first variable in our index, which we named layer. And the value is 1, meaning if it's greater than or equal to 1. If your bridge is supposed to be higher up, then just increase the number. For example, walking up two stair tiles would be 2, and then so on and so forth. As said before, the layer 2 bridges are pretty much set up the same way, except the second event tab, uh, with the variable checked, the value is 2. Next up, we have these little blocks here, which are used to stop the character from just walking straight up onto wherever your bridge ends and begins. Um, otherwise, there wouldn't be anything here to stop your character, and you would just essentially kind of glitch, and it would create quite a mess. So this little event is just set up so that if you're on layer 1 or above, then it does nothing, and if you're on layer 0, which is ground level, then it just acts as a block, like an invisible wall. So next up we have these little blocks here, and what they do is, if you're on layer 1 or above, then they're going to stop the player from just walking off the bridge. And if you're not on layer 1 or above, then they do nothing. Now these little events here, what they do is, when you step on them, they call a common event, which checks and sees the direction that the player is facing, and if he's facing up, meaning if he's going up the stairs, then it increases the layer by 1. Otherwise it decreases it by 1. Finally, we have these little special events down here. You're not going to be able to place events on top of other events without doing a little trick first. And what we need to do is we need to place two bridge tiles in the same spot. We're going to start with the extra bridge tile that you see in the bottom right corner. Basically, the first event page is just a parallel process that uses the set event location event to stack it on top of our layer 1 tile, and then it turns self switch A on. Now, event pages 2 and 3 are basically the exact same as the original layer 2 tiles, but this time we have the self switch box checked for both event pages 2 and 3. You're going to need to do this sort of trick a lot if you're going to be having multiple crossing bridges like this. Last but not least, we have our little blank events there. Now, these are just the same type of blocks that prevent the character from walking off the side of the bridge, but they're set up a little bit differently. The trick here is to make it so that when you're on layer 1, then you're going to be prevented from walking onto a layer 2 bridge, or above. And I know this sounds confusing, but if you just look how I have this set up here, then it should become pretty clear as to how you need to set this kind of thing up. Basically, if you're on layer 1, it's going to prevent you from walking on the bridge that's on top of the layer 1 bridge by using the variable check, like we did before, to act as a block if you're on layer 1. And you need to, and you need to place them on the bridge that's above layer 1 that you don't want to accidentally walk onto. Now for layer 2, you want to do the same thing, except change it to where if you're on layer 2, then you place the two blocks using set event location on the bridge underneath it so that you can't accidentally walk onto the layer 1 bridge from layer 2. That sounds like a mouthful, but I'm sure if you give it a try, you should be able to do it.
And now you should be set up with an infinite layer system. Bye!